extra, extra. Bob Saget's surprise cause of death, blunt force trauma to the head. What happened before he fell asleep and never woke up? And a COVID detail in the report. What do you imagine exactly happened? Could he have been saved? Extra. Now on Extra, where you get to see the show behind the show. Extra, extra. It was the last explanation that anyone expected. Bob Saget died after hitting his head. Hi, folks. Welcome to Extra. I'm Billy Bush. That is the official finding from the medical examiner. And as his family tries to piece together just what happened, the big question is, could he have been saved? Quote, remember the love and laughter. The message from Bob Saget's family as they revealed the news that Bob died from blunt head trauma. His wife, Kelly, shared this video just before the announcement. There was just a trace of sorrow. Set to Jackson Brown's Fountain of Sorrow, she said, I can't even put into words how much I will miss this. The news comes a little more than two weeks after she poured out her heart on national TV and she revealed her final messages with Bob. I think I said, I love you dearly, and he said, I love you endlessly. And then he said, I said, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bob's family tells Extra he accidentally hit the back of his head on something, thought nothing of it, and went to sleep. It's not clear when or how that injury happened, but the medical examiner believes Bob may have fallen. And we're joined by Dr. Wally Wozni, who is the medical director at the Stroke Center at St. Mary's Hospital. We thought it had to do with the heart uh, because of the history in Bob's family. But you would think he'd have to hit his head pretty darn hard, right, for there to be internal bleeding. When that type of injury happens, I mean, it's most common with a severe injury. There was a bruise on the back of his head, and I'm wondering, is it worse to have head trauma in the back of the head, top of the head, side of the head? It's typically on the side of the head. So I don't know if he had a slip and fall somewhere in the hotel room and, and got a little bit sleepy after that, which is a, a tell sign, and um, you know probably passed away in his sleep. How long does it typically take between the actual trauma and the bleeding to get bad enough to take someone's life? In other words, could he have been saved? Everyone's different, but you know, within three hours, I mean, you got to get to the hospital. Typically, if you do have a head trauma and you start to get sleepy within 15 minutes, that's typically when uh, we advise the, the patients to, to go to the hospital. That's why when you're a kid and you bang your head really hard, you know, mom keeps you awake for a certain amount exactly. of time. Or, no, you can't go to sleep. No, I mean, I just remember that. Today, the medical examiner confirmed to Extra there were no illicit drugs found in Bob's system. His family told us alcohol was not involved. It's relevant to note that Bob was COVID positive at the time of death, although there is no evidence that one affected the other. And just like Bob said in his final social media post, sending you guys lots of love. The Saget family told us, let the people you love know you love them. And who could argue with that? A great message.